Okay, so we have this circle here, and we know that the area of the circle is 9 pi centimeters squared. But uh, we're not interested in the area because we're obviously given the area of the circle. What we're interested in is the circumference. So what is the circumference of this circle, or what is the circumference of a circle that has an area of 9 pi centimeters squared? So this is going to be a quick little uh, problem, obviously, on circles. So we're going to review the concept of... Uh, the area of a circle and circumference, right? A fancy word that means something very specific in terms of circles. Definitely some stuff that you need to know. Uh, absolutely. I mean, this is basic um, geometry concepts that, you know, you probably learned way back even in middle school. Maybe you forgot some of this stuff, but no worries. We're going to uh, have you review. And by the time you finish this video, you will be very happy uh, in terms of your knowledge about circles, okay? So we're going to get to this in just one second. But first, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that if you're interested. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But I offer over 100-plus courses um, Obviously, courses like Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching my pre-calculus course here uh, soon, pre-algebra, college algebra. But I have a lot of other specialty courses um, for test preparation for like teacher certification exams or the GED or college placement exams uh, into mathematics. Uh, very, very important type courses, uh, SAT, ACT, you kind of get the drift. So I offer a lot of different uh, courses. It's taken me years to build my program out take a lot of pride in it because I've helped a lot of people and hopefully I could help you if you need assistance, all right? So have full comprehensive lessons and I teach you how to solve the most common problems you're gonna face in middle school math, high school math, and even basic college level mathematics. Literally solve thousands of problems. So if you need help, uh, I think uh, my program could really be a benefit uh, to you. Now, if you are a math student, I kind of assume that you are because you're watching this video, this thing that I'm going to talk about here is just undisputed, one of the top, top things you need to be thinking about. I kind of call, the, call this my golden rule of math over decades of teaching the subject. One thing is apparent to me, those students who take great math notes almost always have great math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who take no math notes, or maybe they take math notes every other Tuesday, or they're saying, I don't need to take math notes because my best friend takes way better notes than I do, and then I just use their notes before the test because I really got to keep up on my social media, and uh, I use uh, my math class time to do my homework for um, social studies. Well, you get the, you get the idea, right? Uh, of course, you see these things um, going on as a teacher. And I can tell you, you're definitely going to pay a price for not taking great math notes, right? And by the way, I'm not coming off as some Mr. Perfect because way back in the good old days before there were cell phones, because there was no cell phones when I was in high school or college. Uh, but if there were, boy, I tell you, I would be completely distracted. So those devices are, you know, I get it. You know, they are very distracting. It's probably one of the main areas where people get um, their focus taken away. you got to be focused on the teacher on what they're teaching, and you got the evidence of that is by you taking excellent math notes. It's not easy to take great math notes. This, this is a skill, so you want to commit to being an, you know, excellent at this. So the, the benefits will be tremendous. Okay, It will be reflective in your grade. But in the meantime, you need something to study from, so I offer uh, detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find a link uh, to those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into circles, everyone's favorite topic. So um, again, we have this circle. We know the area of the circle is 9 pi centimeters squared. What is the circumference? Well, we're going to have to know a few things here. We're going to have to know something about the area of a circle, and we're going to have to know what this word means, circumference, and there's even a formula that goes with that. So let's review uh, these basic concepts here. And then we'll get to uh, solving the problem. All right, so uh, formulas that you need to know. And I would com commit these formulas into your long-term memory. So the area of a circle is equal to uh, pi r squared. This one you want to remember. Okay, There's a lot of formulas in math that you're given. You know, sometimes you just, you know, there's so many formulas. But these circle formulas, you should commit this to your long-term memory. So the area 
is equal to pi r squared. So what is r? r is the radius of the circle. So if this is the center, the from the center out to anywhere, uh, any edge along the circle is this thing called the radius. Okay. Now, if I continue on to this other side, I would have another little radius. Okay. This whole distance right here is called the diameter. You kind of think of it as the width of the circle, all right, is the diameter. And then from the center, half of the diameter is the radius. These are things that you need to know. Okay. So that's the area of a circle. So if we know the radius, we can determine the area of the circle. And of course, pi, let's just get to this fancy uh, symbol here, pi, is approximately the decimal 3.14, okay? The pi is actually something we would call an irrational number, meaning that this decimal goes on and on and on infinitely, okay? It's non-repeating and non-terminating. So if I want to know the thousandth digit of this number, I'd actually have to go ahead and just like get my computer out or, you know, try to calculate this out. So it's, this thing is always changing. Okay. So if this decimal is, you know, not repeating and not ending, well, how am I going to deal with this, you know, infinitely long number? Well, we give it a little symbol. Okay. We just say, hey, listen, this little symbol right here is going to account for this thing. Now, one thing about pi, this is a little bonus uh, thing here. I've done other videos on it. So we're like, well, how do we get this 3.14? Why this is this such a magical number? Well, pi, I'm going to tell you how it's calculated here in just one microsecond because let's talk about circumference, okay? We have to understand what circumference is, and here's the um, formulas for circumference. We actually have two ways we can express this, uh, what the circumference is in a circle, but what is the circumference? Well, the circumference is the distance around a circle. That's it, right? So think of it as like the perimeter of a circle. You know, if like if I have a little rectangle, the perimeter is this plus this plus this plus this. That distance is the perimeter. Well, we don't call uh, the perimeter, when we're talking about circles, we don't call it the perimeter, the distance around a circle. We call it the circumference. But that's what it is, okay? So the circumference is... Uh, you can find it with this formula, 2 times pi times r, which, of course, that's the radius, or the circumference is equal to the diameter times pi. And the reason why, you know, this is the same is because 2 times r, all right, is, in fact, the diameter, all right? So whatever way you want to remember these formulas, you, of course, uh, it's convenient to know both of these uh, deals, but, you know, if you know this one, then you, by default, you'll know this one, okay? Just, you just got to understand the relationship between the radius and diameter. This is basic circle stuff 101, okay? This is stuff that you should know. And uh, now, let me get back to our lovely uh, variable here, our, our uh, um, concept of pi. So where is this number coming from, 3.14? Well, here is where it's coming from, okay? You take any circle, I mean any circle, all right? And you take its circumference, okay, the distance around a circle like this. You take that circumference and you divide it by the diameter, okay? So we're going to take that uh, distance around a circle and you divide it by the diameter. You get the same number every single time, no matter what circle, because circles are going to be in portion, right? Here's a small circle, there's a bigger, there's a medium-sized circle. It doesn't make a difference. You take this distance divided by the diameter, that distance, which is the circumference divided by the diameter, you keep getting the same number. What is that number? It's this number. It's pi, okay? So it's approximately 3.14, da, 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 da. Other people express it as 22 sevenths. So these are estimates. Now, uh, typically when you're working with circles, we often uh, time, uh, unless you want an approximation, you could use the decimal 3.14. You can even go into your calculator and get a nice long decimal. Remember, those are approximations. This is a big um, thing that I'm stressing here. Okay, Anytime you use a decimal value for pi, you are getting an answer that's approximately uh, correct. Okay, So in other words, you can, you, it's the more values, more decimal uh, places you go out, that the more accurate your answer is going to be. So you let's say you go out to, you know, six decimal points. Well, it's pretty accurate. But if you went out to ten, you would be having even more accurate. If you went out to a thousand, it would be more accurate. So if you want the most precise answer, we don't even um, use a decimal for pi. We're just going to just call our answers pi. Okay, this is where we have exact answers. So now, uh, knowing this, let's get to our problem. Okay, so we're told 
that the area of the circle is 9 pi centimeters squared. This is an exact value for the area of the circle, okay? So it's 9 pi. I'm not taking 9 and, oh, and saying for pi, oh, let's multiply them by 3.14. Because as soon as I do that, I get an approximation. Now, sometimes you want to do that, so you get a feel for the number. But the reason why we like to not use that decimal is to leave it our answers as an exact value. So this is very common when we're uh, dealing with circles is just to have that pi in there. Okay, So 9 pi centimeters squared. Notice the units of measure area is going to be in units squared. Okay, So our units here are centimeters squared. So if our area is in centimeters squared, we're going to be thinking our circumference is not a unit of measure of area. It's a unit of measure of distance. Okay, so our circumference will be in centimeters, right? All right, so yeah, like a lot of little tiny little details here, right? So a lot of you are probably looking at this problem like, yeah, I know what to do. You're just going to take this and you're going to do one, two, three. And maybe you have the general idea of the process, but it's the little details that you want to master so you can fully comprehend circles, circumference, units of measure, pi, why we use pi and not 3.14, et cetera, et cetera, right? I'm not, not talking, I'm not trying to just teach you the basics here. When you get done with one of my videos, I'm trying to get you to be like the top person in your class, right? So you'll be like, wow, really impress your teacher with your math knowledge. That's the whole idea here. Okay, so let's get into this. So have the area, it's nine pi centimeters squared. All right, so I know the formula, okay, for the area of a circle. So let's find some information here, okay? What can I, uh, you know, given the area here, all right? I know the area, all right, okay, it was given to me 9 pi. I know pi, that's just a value. So um, I don't know the radius of the circle, okay? The radius, that would be convenient because if I do, if I knew the radius, I can get the, uh, the circumference, right? All right, so area is equal to pi r squared. I know that the area is 9 pi centimeters squared, so the area is 9 pi. Okay, we can just drop the units of measure right now as we're doing these calculations. So 9 pi is equal to pi r squared. Okay, the pi's cross cancel. Okay, if I divide both sides of the equation by pi, they will uh, be eliminated. So now this comes down to this equation, 9 equals r squared. We like to always like to have our variable on the left-hand side. Remember, don't get... Uh, freaked out about this. The left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, and the right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side. There's a symmetry here, if you will, in terms of um, mathematics. There's other technical properties that we uh, express, and these are some things that you should know. Just know, hey, I can write this equation as 9 equals r squared, or r squared is equal to 9. We're just more uh, familiar with uh, having the variable on the left-hand side. So how do I solve for r? I have r squared. Well, to solve this basic equation, I just go ahead and take the square root of both sides. Okay, so the square root of r squared is r. That's what I want. Saying the square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. Okay, because positive 3 times positive 3 is 9, and negative 3 times negative 3 is also positive 9. But the radius, I'm pretty sure, is not going to be a negative number, right? That wouldn't make a lot of sense for us. So we'll call our answer r is equal to 3. Okay, but 3 what? Well, 3 centimeters, okay? So the radius is 3 centimeters because the area was in centimeters squared. Okay, so if you understand that, now we're off to the races because all we need is the radius and we can get the circumference of the circle. All right, so here is our two equations that we can use. We have the circumference is equal to 2 pi r, or the circumference is equal to uh, the diameter times pi. No need to get the diameter. Of course, it's obvious that the radius is 3, so the diameter would be 6 centimeters. So if you want to go that route, that's fine. But we'll go ahead and use this formula for circumference. So the circumference is going to be equal to 2 times pi times the radius, which is 3. And, of course, I already know in advance that my uh, answer is going to be in centimeters. So 2 times 3 is 6, and we'll write that as 6 times pi. So my circumference is 6 pi centimeters, okay? Again, uh, you don't want to uh, do this problem by 
taking pi and plugging in 3.14s for all these pi's, uh, you can, you know, obviously you need to understand that you can do that, but you're getting an approximation, all right? So when you're dealing with circles, you're going to be dealing with pi, these values of pi's, and these are very, you know, important little subtle principles that I'm talking about, okay? All right, so at the end of this video, hopefully you understand what circumference is, you know, the, the formulas for circumference, you know, the formulas for areas, you know how pi is derived, you know what circumference um, uh, means, uh, you know, this is good stuff. This is a basic review of um, circles. And there's a lot more uh, with circles, but, you know, when you're studying circles, this is a good place to start. And hopefully, you know, you learn something from this video, and this is your current expression as you watch this video. You're like, I just can't believe how much I learned about circles. And when I go into my math class, my teacher is going to just shower me with A pluses. 100% and many, many stars, all right? That was so cool to get those stars way back in the first, second grade. I can even remember uh, getting those big stars next to my name for I don't know what. I guess it was after finger painting class, which was, uh, you know, really cool stuff. I can remember that, and that's already like, what, almost 50 years ago for me. Okay, so if you like this video in some way, please consider smashing that like button because that would help me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've uh, been on YouTube for a long time. It is a great platform for someone like myself who is obsessed with teaching mathematics. And uh, of course, if you really need uh, help in math and like my teaching style, uh, just follow those links in the description of this video. That's where you'll find my best uh, help. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.